Today's video is going to be me recreating my entire wedding outfit and my look. I'm going to talk through skincare prep, makeup, hair, my outfit, why I chose it, accessories, jewellery, the handbag I wore, the coat I wore, the shoes, everything, um, and kind of talk through like getting ready with the outfit and then also why I chose. First up, I'm going to get started on skincare. Um, my hair we'll deal with in a minute um but for skincare i think i didn't really in terms of like prepping before the wedding i didn't really do anything i didn't go on any special diet or do any facials or anything like that um for our wedding we just had a registry service and then a really nice lunch so it was never a big wedding um or you know like a white dress kind of situation so it was definitely more casual in that sense. Um, but one thing I did do was skin prep and I was doing that, I'd say I started prepping my skin like I bought some like new skincare probably from around August. Um, more just because I wanted to have, you know, good skin, like my skin gets quite dry, I can get bumps around it. Um, and so that was something I was kind of aware of. But as you guys know who follow my channel in October, my mum, passed really suddenly and so that disrupted a lot of the process of planning for the wedding so in this video I'm also going to be talking about that and how you know like I actually didn't get my outfit until the week before the wedding I bought my makeup for the wedding the Saturday before we got married on the Monday so a lot of things were very last minute but I had been thinking about it from before that happened so I did have some things in mind already it's just we had a, a big life disruption happen on the way to the wedding um so i would say although i started my skincare prep in like august from october mid-october to about a week before the wedding i wasn't doing anything to my skin i was rarely even putting moisturizer on it i just wasn't looking after myself at all so the week before the wedding i picked up my skincare again started to try and make that a priority just to kind of feel nice and have some moments to pamper myself throughout grieving and I think that's been really nice actually. So I'm gonna take you through my skincare. The first thing I do is cleanse my face with the Kiehl's Centella cleanser. I've been using this for a few years and then I had a break from it and used a different cleanser, but I've come back to it. I really like it. It's very gentle, it's very creamy. The way I use this is I just um, massage it into my skin. This also does take off makeup um, if you're wearing makeup, but I wear quite light makeup that you'll see in this video. So. It takes off my kind of makeup. Um, I'm not sure if you had more makeup on, if it, if you might need to double cleanse with that. Um, so I just massage it into the skin and then wipe it off with a warm, um, damp flannel. After cleansing, um, I go in with a cotton pad, which I really want to get some reusable ones of these because obviously this isn't very good. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which ones are the best. If you guys know any recommendations of reusable cotton pads, let me know in the comments because I definitely want to pick those up. But I've been using this um, since the summer. This is the Pixie Glow Tonic. It's got 5% glycolic acid and it's an exfoliating toner. I have very sensitive skin and this works for me really well. So I just wet quite a lot a um, cotton pad and then rub this all over my face. And I really noticed this has helped to smooth out my skin, create a nice, nicer texture and also to get rid of those bumps that I have under the skin and I use this all around my eyes as well I've had no issues there with using it like that you can see I have got sensitive skin like it does get quite pink but it does go down and my skin just feels really nice I'm also using this lately over these areas a bit more where I'm starting to get those fine lines um, fine lines, wrinkles does not bother me. I think if I can just do something to help my skin be moisturised, I think that really helps um, with the appearance of it. But I think, you know, there's only so much you can do and getting old is a privilege or getting older. I'm not old, but getting older. So after I've done that, I just wait a little bit for it to dry. And then... Um, I feel like that's kind of dried a bit. I go in with the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid. These are just things that have been recommended to me, like different products. So if I'm missing a step or doing things out of order, do let me know because I'm just kind of 
I've been figuring this out myself with a skincare. I've never really been one to put much into skincare, so it's all new to me. If there's a step that you think can help me just to retain moisture and keep my skin looking nice, um, do let me know. I'm 29, so I have been told I should use an eye cream. I'm not so sure, guys. I don't know, I feel like I don't want to do too much, but if there is something I can do, let me know. I find that this hyaluronic acid from The Ordinary just helps my skin to absorb moisturiser. Now, if I was doing this routine at night, I would then use the Kiehl's um, Midnight Recovery Oil, which I really, really like. But because this is for daytime, um, and with the Pixi Glow Tonic, you do need an SPF. So I'm using this. This is the CeraVe Facial Moisturising Lotion, and this has spf 25 i think because it's in a moisturizer i think it might lessen the spf rating a bit again if you guys know anything about that that i should know or you want to share or if you know of a really good like daytime spf let me know but lately i've been using this moisturizer um and it goes really nicely under makeup i don't wear makeup every day but when i do and i've used this it is really nice and i found that doing my skincare like this leading up to the wedding and then for the wedding. My makeup sat just really nicely. Yeah. Yes, please. Chamomile. That's my husband making me a chamomile tea. How lucky am I? That's another thing. Since my mum died, I have been living off of chamomile tea. Oh God, I'm getting an emotional wave. This week I was meant to film um, for you guys. Today's upload was going to be trying to get my life back on track and then vlogging the week. And I started on Monday, but I just had such a hard week. Like, I think the wedding and the honeymoon, like, kept me going. And it was, like, a really nice, like, a distraction because it was so full of love. Um, if you guys watch the honeymoon vlog, you'll see I started to kind of, like, have times where I was struggling there. This week's just been so hard. I've cried so much this week. <clears throat> just talking about it, I feel like I'm going to cry again. But I thought this is a good video to do because it kind of gets me back into that wedding mind. And it's nice to get ready for the wedding and do it with you guys and share that. So for makeup, I knew I wanted it to be really natural. Um, I haven't worn foundation for years. Um, and all of 2019, I was really... Just wearing a little bit of concealer sometimes and then lipstick that was really it for makeup but i did want to wear some makeup and feel really lovely and kind of have like a special feeling on my wedding day um and since buying these bits of makeup for my wedding i've been wearing them all the time and i'm really really liking them i say that's definitely something that's changed within me lately like i'm really enjoying makeup again i think it's just with you know like grief one of the things that i'm using as a distraction is like self pamper um, and trying now to get into self-care like I'm trying to get back to the gym because again it just gives me something to do but um, yeah I'm finding that quite quite nice to do as like a ritual for myself um, but in terms of foundation I was thinking to get the YSL um, Tusha Claire foundation because when I used to wear foundation a few years ago that's what I loved but I went to Peter Jones and I just I don't know, the counter of YSL, the people who were working there that day, I just found them quite dismissive and it was for my wedding makeup, you know, and I said to them, like, oh, I'm looking for a foundation for my wedding and the way they colour matched me, it wasn't the right shade, but they kept telling me like it was, but I could see it wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't really happy with that experience, so I ended up going to the Chanel beauty counter, again in Peter Jones, which is John Lewis um, on the King's Road in Sloan Square, if you're wondering, and the staff there was so nice. Um, and I ended up picking up this. This is the Phytolumia Aqua um, Ultra Light Skin Perfecting Makeup SPF 15. Funnily enough, I think they've changed the formula of this. But the original form formula is what I would wear when I met Alan 10 years ago. So I thought that actually was a coincidence that I ended up getting it. But it tied in quite nicely for the wedding. But anyway, with this you just give it a good shape. And then I put a bit on the back of my hand. I need a little bit more than that, like that. So I don't know if any of you guys have experienced something similar to me where you've had such a big loss before a big occasion or a wedding. 
it's very very hard like it's probably hard all the time but they're getting married like just think about that all the time you know like even the other day me and my sister went to the cinema and then at the end of the movie I saw my hand with my rings on it and I was like oh my god I got married without my mum like it's just it's been tomorrow it's three weeks since we got married and I'm still thinking that but it was a really beautiful day I'm glad we went ahead with it like I am spiritual I do feel like my mum sees sees it but it's just sometimes it feels like that's not enough I need to talk to her I want her to be there especially with you know doing makeup and my outfit I felt so me and so pretty and I know she would have said that as well so as you can see with the skincare prep and then with the Vitalumia Aqua it just gives a nice kind of finish to the skin I have got a spotlight on over here um, you can still see redness coming through. I don't mind that. That's what I look like. That's my skin But I think it just kind of perfects everything and gives it a nice glow is there um, On my wedding day, I then went in with a little bit of Glossier U uh, Glossier U, that's the perfume. Glossier Stretch Concealer under my eyes But that was the last of it and I ran out and I haven't repurchased it So I'm not going to be able to do that today. Um, I also wore contact lenses on my wedding But I have also run out of contact lenses now so I'm not going to be able to put those in either. So I'm doing this with partial sight because my glasses are down here. Anyway, the next step of what I did, I think it was eyebrows. So I'm just going to let everything sink into my skin before I do the next skin step. Um, but I'll do my eyebrows next. The two eyebrow products I used were the Anastasia Be Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. And I used the shade Medium Brow. I've used this for years and years and years. And then this was a new makeup product that I picked up the day before the wedding and um, because for a long time I've been using Glossier Boy Brow as a brow gel but I ran out of that as well. Didn't have time to make an online order again just because I was doing everything so last minute because I wasn't in the mindset for it. Um, and when I show you guys like my outfit and when I'm getting into my outfit I'll talk through my outfit more um, and when I picked it up and things like that and why. Um, but with the brow gel I ended up getting it was just the benefit give me brow um I got the shade three I really like this I bought the small one just because I wasn't sure you know how much I would like it um but I do really like it I think I would buy it again I'm gonna come close to you guys so I can use you as a mirror for my brows now with my brows I like to extend them a bit Okay, and then I'm just gonna brush through them a little bit. This one on camera looks darker, but I think it's just because I've got a light over here. Because in real life it doesn't. Now, one thing with my hair, guys, on the day, having it like this is actually probably gonna really mess up my fringe. But on the day I washed my hair in the morning, so it was wet. So I haven't washed it today because I washed it yesterday. So that's the only difference with my hair. I am gonna have to blow dry it a little bit to try and get some shape into it. But I'm doing that from it dry, so we'll see how that goes. But on my wedding I did wash it, that's the only difference. Anyway, that's those done. Next I'm going to do mascara. So I have been using this mascara for years. Again, you can kind of tell my favourite products I just used a long time. Um, I haven't, because I haven't all year, I didn't really wear mascara. I would just wear lipstick and then maybe do something with my brows, but mainly just lipstick. So for me... I was very up and down on whether I was even going to wear mascara for the wedding but I decided to just because I was going to be wearing contacts and I thought it will really open my eyes up because I actually have like quite good lashes I guess they're quite thick and long um but normally I don't put anything on them and I just wear glasses so when I wear mascara it opens my eyes a bit um and I'm using the Surat eyelash curlers these are fantastic for me, I always need to curl my eyelashes because they are so straight. So this, the mascara I'm using is the Dior Pump and Volume. You're meant to pump the end to get more product on it. But I actually think it has too much product on it already and it can be quite wet. So I wipe off some of the product. So you can see already what a difference that makes to my eyes. Like it just really opens it up. You guys are a bit raised actually, so you're kind of getting the downside of it. I think it makes a really big difference. 
The next thing I'm going to do is go in with this, which this was a scary product to me when the lady at Chanel first showed it to me because originally when I went to Chanel, I was just going to pick this up, but I just felt like I needed some dimension to my face. Um, and so I said to her, like, what kind of like bronzers or sculpting things do you have? And she said, this is really good. It's a universal shade because I'm quite fair. You can see definitely on my neck how fair I am. Oh yeah, also with the Chanel um, by Tulumia Aqua, my shade is 10 beige so if you're as fair as me this is a good shade i think this i think this might be one of the lighter shades um but with this this is the bronze universal um bronzing makeup base i think it's called the soleil yeah that's it soleil tan de chanel supposedly this works on um like a multitude of skin tones so let me know if you have different skin tone to me and you've tried this and you like it the lady in the shop had a gorgeous really olive tan skin she said she was wearing this and it just looked so glowy on her um, and then for me I'm using the Real Techniques sculpting brush to add a little bit of dimension into my cheeks I just dab it in like this sometimes I go around and then dab it on and you can build with this and then if you do do too much you can always just kind of like go back in with your um, foundation or some concealer. Also I'm doing it down here just to kind of tie it all together, sculpt my jawline a little bit and then I do it a little bit at the end of my chin just because I've still got a little bit of that double chin there. So on the day I actually used three different lip products. But before I go in with my lip products, I'm just going to put some lip balm on, which I forgot to do. This is just the Agave Nectar Lip Balm from Bite Beauty. I got this when I was in LA in October. I'm not sure if you can get it in the UK, but any lip balm will do. Um, I actually put this on when I did my skincare on my wedding day just to like moisturise my lips. I'm just going to leave that on for a minute and then come back and um, wipe off the residue and then do my lips. So like I mentioned, I used three lip products on my wedding day. The first one was a lip liner by NARS. This is in the shade... Is it called Ride It? I think so. And it's the Precision Lip Liner. Then after that I used this lipstick also by NARS. This is um, an audacious lipstick. And it's called Bet. And what's really nice is Alan actually bought this for me um, earlier this year. Sorry, not this year. It's January, isn't it? Earlier last year. Um, as a surprise, which was really, really nice. So I thought that, again, is just like a really nice touch to tie in with Alan on the wedding day. Um, but first, I'm going to go in with the lip liner. And because I knew we would be eating and drinking after the registry... I put the lip liner all over my lips as a base so that even as the lip products like the lipstick and the lip gloss I use come off, it will still um, have some colour there. So for me, I don't like my lipstick to look too perfect. I like it to look a little bit imperfect, maybe like I've just been kissed. Um, so I don't use a lip liner to line my lips into a shape or to overline them or to perfect them. It's more to give a base to the lip products should they wear off. So in terms of um, my nail colour, this is very similar to what I had on the day, but this is um, Essie Ballet Slippers, and I've just put two coats of that on, um, and that was very similar to what I had on the day. The one I had on the day was like, um, the place I went to get a manicure done was their own brand, so I don't have that shade, but it basically looked exactly like this. I think this is a good little bridal colour. Um, originally I was going to go for a, a maroon, similar to like this lipstick colour, I decided just to lighten it up a bit, um, just for something different. With the lipstick, I don't apply it straight on. I dab it on, mix it in, like kind of like rub it in with my finger, and then I'll dab it with some tissue and put on another layer. Again, just trying to build the lipstick so that it's durable. It's not going to smudge like across my face. This is how I wear make uh, how I wear lipstick all the time. All of my lipsticks are done like this. I think it's just a good way to kind of like stain your lips rather than to have a perfect lipstick that you're worried talking with. Um, it's just very wearable like this. And then the last step for the lips was another new product that I picked up at the same time as the other two Chanel items. This is a very dark Chanel lip gloss. I love a vampy lip. Um, and this is Rouge Coco Gloss in 816. 
which is quite nice actually because we got married on the 16th so it's nice that there's a 16 in there so I'm just wiping a little bit of the excess this is a very dark shade what I found was if I just put this on my lips without my other lipstick and lip liner underneath it I look like I dyed um, it's very it's very purple um, whereas putting it with the berry tones underneath it lifts it a little bit so it's still dark but it's not like I dyed it's not too gothic I do like that look but for my wedding day wasn't what I was going for and again just dabbing this on my lips I'm gonna smudge it in with my finger if I come closer you can see it just adds a nice little sheen and some depth to the lips okay so that's my makeup done obviously I took those three lip products with me in my handbag for the day this is where we wish him good luck because my hair has been back like that and it's dry. Um, originally for the wedding day I was going to have my hair kind of like a half up, half down, like this, with my fringe. But after blow drying it, it was too fluffy because I washed it on the day. So instead I just blow dried it with this brush. I just took sections like this and then kind of rolled it in and then I used the hair dryer to go down and kind of like rolled it round. Um, and the point of that was to get like that kind of like bob shape so that's what I did on the day um, for now I'm actually just going to try and redo my fringe um, I'm going to put it into my brush like this and then use the blow dry heat to blow it down so I'm going to try that now I've got this really mini hair dryer by Remington I think I've had this since I was maybe 17 how crazy is that and it still works I'm actually going to take a little bit of the um, Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray just to give it a, a little bit of lift and some texture. Um, for my jewellery on my face, I wore these earrings. These are my mum's, um, which she actually gave me a while ago and I started wearing these in the summer. Um, and she kept on saying to me, are you going to wear those for your wedding? So, of course, I wore them for my wedding. Which are really, really nice. And then before I get dressed, I'm going to put some perfume on, um, just on my skin. And then I went over my outfit with my perfume and put extra on. So I chose for the day Frederick Mao's Portrait of a Lady. This is a beautiful rosé wine smelling scent. It's got a little bit of a spice to it, a lot of depth. It's a beautiful fragrance, probably one of my all-time favourites. Um... And again, Alan bought me this for Christmas a couple of years ago, so a nice little nod to him. I think things that you can tie in are really nice like that. And a lot of the things that I ended up having tied in to Alan um, were a coincidence, but a really nice touch actually throughout memory when I think of it. So other jewellery I wore, um, of course I wasn't wearing my wedding band yet. This is um, my mum's wedding band that I got resized. I've got my... Um, I guess you'd say engagement ring. It was actually a 10 year anniversary present from Alan because we didn't have a traditional engagement. We discussed it together um, and made the decision together to get married. And then for our 10 year anniversary, which was on our wedding day, I got this ring, which um, I know a lot of you have been asking about. It's a sapphire with two diamonds either side of it. Um, and I love how dark and like deep the color of the sapphire is. Then on this hand, um, I wore my mum's engagement ring. Again, just a nice way to tie her in with her jewellery um, and her wedding band. And it's nice. Like, I don't wear her engagement ring every day now, but I do wear this set every day. And it's nice to have her wedding band as my wedding band now. So, again, just different ways to tie my mum in to our wedding day. Okay, so that's my skincare hair, um, even though it looks a little bit different, and makeup done with my jewellery and my perfume. Now let's get into the good stuff, the outfit. I wanted to show you the makeup in daylight. I'm standing in front of my window now. Um, you can see the bronze is just really natural. Also how the lips look. So I think it all ties in together really, really nicely. Um, just a really natural makeup, but something a bit enhanced for what I actually look like. It still feels like me. It's still what I would wear with the dark lip and the quite subtle eye. Um, so I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, also, if you like, 
um, the look of any of the products I've used on my face or you want to learn more about them or you want to see like the specific items of the clothes I'm wearing um, everything will be linked in the description box and because I didn't buy my outfit too long ago it was like four weeks ago um, it should still be on the website and might even be on sale um, so I'll link everything in the description box in case you're interested Okay, so for my outfit, I went super simple and low key. Um, my outfit in itself was very, very affordable and where I chose to spend most of my money for my wedding budget was on my shoes. Um, originally, I set myself a budget of 500 pounds for my wedding outfit. I did end up exceeding that. Um, and I'll tell you how much everything costs now happy to do that it's not really a big deal to me um and i think considering what some wedding outfits cost i think i did pretty well um so let's talk about choosing the wedding outfit um firstly um as you can see from the footage earlier and pictures you might have seen i went for an all black like main outfit uh, which i know is not traditional um i decided quite early on to be honest probably in the summer that I wanted something darker. Um, I was looking at some really beautiful dresses that were black. Um, I just love wearing black. I feel powerful in black. I think it's striking and mysterious. I personally really like wearing black. So I did think maybe I would be wearing black. Um, but I was open. I also thought it would be really nice to get a really lovely navy because of the sapphire in my ring. Um, I've also been getting questions about if Alan bought this just on his own or if I contributed towards choosing which one. We did go together in September to choose me a ring. So um, we did do that together and I know I've gotten quite a lot of questions from you guys about us planning the wedding and the wedding day itself and my ring. So me and Alan at some point will answer all those questions and do a video. I'm sure that will be in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I thought a nice like sapphire coloured dress or a navy dress would be lovely. Um, so I was kind of heading that way with the dark tones, but also knew that I was looking at black too. Um, a couple, I'd say two weeks before the wedding or maybe three weeks before the wedding, um, I had nothing to wear still. And my dad started to say, right, this weekend we're going to go and try on dresses. So we went to Selfridges, I went to Liberty at one point. We went to, I think, John Lewis, try and look and look at dresses there. We went to quite a few different places over two different weekends. Um, and I just couldn't find anything. I think, I think it was a mix between not being in the right mindset and then also just not fully knowing what I wanted. I knew I wanted like a 1960s style. I knew I wanted something that I could wear again. Um, and I knew I was open to darker colours. But when we were in Selfridges, I actually tried on a really lovely black, quite poofy, special, one-off occasion dress from um, from a brand called Needle and Thread. Um, that was a beautiful dress. I'm going to put a picture of what it looked like on the screen here, just so you guys can see. Am I in focus? I think so. Um, I loved that dress. It was strapless, which is not something I would usually go for. Um, and considering it was a December wedding, I just thought I'd be too cold. But I think if I had had sleeves, I might have ended up going down that route with a really statement dress. Even though I wanted something I could wear again, I probably wouldn't be able to wear that again. But it just felt so special. And I felt like, do I go for a special dress? Do I go for something I can wear again? I was really torn. I didn't know what to get. And just because of the situation, I wasn't... I wasn't in the right mindset. Everything I tried on, I didn't know what felt right. Like I didn't feel, I don't feel like I'm the same person I was before what happened in October. And so then having to go shopping for an outfit that was for one of the most, like the biggest occasions in my life, that was very difficult, especially as someone who feels like clothes are such a huge part of my self-expression. I felt quite lost there. Um, but the good thing that did come from me going with my dad to try on dresses is it got me back into that mindset of going to try clothes on um, and then a week before the wedding I decided you know what I'm just gonna have a look online see what kind of things I like from high street shops um, and do an online order so I ended up doing an online order from Marks and Spencers and that's when I found the two items I ended up wearing for my wedding from Marks and Spencers that's really when I decided I was gonna spend the majority of my budget blow my budget on my shoes so these are the shoes I got these are Chanel slingbacks these have been on my wish list since about 2014 um, they're just so chic so classic they're very grandma-esque 
but I think you can style them with like jeans, you can dress them up, there's so many ways you can dress these. These were £660, so these exceeded my original wedding budget, but I just thought seeing as I was getting such a basic outfit that I can wear again and again, I can wear these again and again and I'll treat myself, it's my wedding. Um, so that's why I blew over my budget. Um, I got these in my original size, which is a 38, although I'm usually a 37 and a half, but I did get these in a 38. I got these, I think, probably four days before the wedding. Um, so everything was quite last minute at the end. Um, but I think they really lightened up the black in my outfit. Um, I did consider getting the black pair and wearing it with tights because it's a winter wedding, but I just thought I'll get so much more use out of these. These are the ones that I'd always, always wanted. Um, and I was okay going without tights. So those are the shoes, that's where over my budget went. Um, in terms of the outfit, this is the jumper I wore. I've already worn it a couple times since the wedding, so choosing something I would wear again and again has definitely worked out for me. Um, it's just a black cashmere jumper. You can't really, there's not, not really much else to say. It's cashmere, so it's luxurious. This was, I think, £80 from Marks and Spencers. Um, and then the skirt that I wore with it was just um, a satin slip skirt, as you can see. Um, and in Marks and Spencers, this was £25, so a real steal. And again, I'll wear this again and again, already worn it a couple of times. And it's a really nice quality. I saw a slip skirt in And Other Stories, which I think was maybe 60 something pounds, but it didn't feel that good quality. This one feels much better. I think it's maybe, it's just thicker material. And it was 25 pounds, which is really good. Um, this I got in a size 12 and my jumper I got, I think in a 14. Um, yeah, really, really happy with those. We'll wear them again and again. The skirt comes in a long or regular length. I decided to get the long length, even though I'm only 5'3", because I wanted it to be longer and more elegant. And I'm really glad I chose that with this skirt. So really simple outfit, um, and I think it, it is a really tough one, guys, because I kind of knew I wanted a 60s simple outfit I could wear again and again. I did consider going down the route of getting a really special one-off dress, but because of just my mindset, I couldn't make decisions at all. I still can't, like, like don't even try to ask me what to have for lunch. I cannot make decisions at the moment, and so deciding what to wear for my wedding was very difficult. And so this, I'm really happy with how it ended up. Um, I'm really happy with my outfit, I wouldn't change it. So I think, yeah, I got lucky there. I'm glad it worked out as it did. Um, for my handbag, I used my mum's Chanel bag. Um, those of you who have been following me for a while would have seen this before because um, I used to use this years ago all the time. And then I ended up actually just not using it anymore. So it was with my mum again. And then I said to her probably in around, August time like can I use it for the wedding so she put it aside for me so that was always going to be used for the wedding um this is vintage it's from um I think 1992 or something like that you can see what the inside is like it's a single flap if you're interested in Chanel it's gold hardware and even though all my jewelry that I wore is um white gold I think this tied in quite nicely with the nude in the shoes um so quite a Chanel theme with the makeup um the lipstick like lip gloss I wore and my accessories i think chanel is so special definitely a wedding occasion to kind of get some special chanel items um, and then for my coat was this item which is this gorgeous houndstooth coat um i think this was 200 pounds however this doesn't count as my wedding budget because i bought it on like the first week of october and i didn't even buy it for the wedding i bought it because i loved it and then it worked out perfectly for the wedding um i just wore it like over my shoulders, if I can get it on. And I think that the shape of it is stunning. This collar, the small hound's tooth with the gray and the black, again, just lightens everything because of the dark colors I was wearing underneath it. And the collar just really adds to that 60s vibe, which is something that I was really wanting to go for. So a very simple outfit. Um, did take us a while to get there. But to be honest, even before everything happened in October, I was still not sure, you know, what to get. Um, but I thought to myself, well, I've got like eight weeks to go. And then suddenly I had a week and time flew. Um, so that is my outfit. 
don't really know what else to say about it. I felt really good. I think the key thing, if you're having a registry wedding or a big wedding or a small wedding, whatever type of wedding you're having, or if you have one in the future, make sure that you get your outfit and your accessories to feel like you. It's your day, you wanna feel good, you wanna feel like yourself. And I think I could have been very wrapped up in, oh, what are people gonna say about me wearing black? And obviously a few people are like, you're wearing black. But it was my day and, and it was my day. It was mine and Alan's day, but it was my outfit for this special occasion. And that's what worked for me. That's what made me feel like me. I feel great in this outfit. I felt great on the day in this outfit with my makeup as well, with the dark lip. Um, I really, really like that. And I think it kind of worked in our favor to have a winter wedding because I like these dark colors and these berry lips. Yes, there we go guys. I don't know how long this video is gonna end up being, but that is my entire winter outfit from head to toe, start to finish, hair, makeup, skincare, accessories, the outfit itself. Um, quite the journey to get there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you wore for your wedding or what you're planning to wear for your wedding if you haven't yet had one in the future. Um, I think, yeah, like I said, it's just important to be yourself and to do you. Um, I can't wait to read your comments on what you wore and I'll see you next. Oh, guys, let me know videos you might want to see next as well because um, I need some help thinking of some things. <laughs> okay, I will see you soon. Bye, guys.